Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing the 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max variant. This one has, let me talk you really quick for the specs. This one has the M1 Max processor with 10 core CPU and 32 cores GPU. It has 64 gigabytes of unified memory. It has two terabytes of SSD and it's in silver, as you noticed probably by the wallpaper. Now, this is just going to be a first impressions video, an unboxing video. And as you've probably noticed, the MacBook Pro is doesn't have it. The box doesn't have its uh, wrap because I'm going to tell you a quick reason why. So I brought this from the United States and it has been for the airports and apparently it hit a stage when the customs had to open up a bag which, which was being carried on and they open it up just custom regulations so that's why i i brought it from this like this from the united states wrapped i didn't unbox it so i could come back home and film an unboxing video on it but unfortunately the customs ruined it for me they unwrapped the foil which is kind of a part of this unboxing experience but doesn't really matter i hope the laptop is in its safe condition and doesn't have any dents and scratches but yeah this is my first time opening the box so um, yeah unfortunately there's no wrap i just have to pull open the box and here is our macbook pro in silver i'm just gonna set the cover aside and as you can see here there it is i'm gonna set that aside as well and let's get to the contents in the box so inside we get our max safe free cable and what i like about it is it's wrapped it's I, I forgot the the name which it's wrapped in like it's coiled yeah i forgot what it's called i'll probably put a, a text what these cables are called but it's wrapped in this nice material and the benefit of this it it's durable it's gonna last you a long time because one of the issues i noticed with these max safe chargers from the previous macbook pros retinas that second generation of max safe they were really really unreliable they would break a lot like when i used to have my macbook pro retina from 2013 and my family members as well we would have to buy a lot of these MagSafe chargers because the cables are unreliable now the benefit of having the cable separately is you can just replace the cable you don't have to replace it with the block so it's kind of reducing environmental waste yeah a bit hard to open this one but Here's our 2 meter MagSafe free cable, which is thinner now than MagSafe 2 with a USB C out end. Then we get our design by Apple in California. Um, you know, envelope like we're used to. We get our MacBook Pro Quick Start Guide, um, warranty information, black Apple stickers, and that's pretty much it. And then we get our 96. And then we get our 96 watt power brick and as you can see as i said it has the united states plug but i'm just gonna swap it for the british one because as i said it was brought from united states and where is the wrapper it's stuck just gonna have to rip it out and yeah those are all the contents in the box pretty simple like usual apple way now i'm just gonna set aside the, everything aside and let's take a look boy do i really hope that this thing hasn't got any scratches because looking at the box from the when i opened the our suitcase looking from the box the box was really beaten up i don't know what they were doing with it maybe they dropped it and i hope the laptop itself in its safe condition but anyway let's take a look so it looks like to me they didn't unwrap it which is good or they did the glue doesn't and here is our macbook pro oh just looking at it i already see a little scratch um i don't know if you see it that there see a small 
That's already worrying me a bit. Don't I don't want to get a laptop this expensive and know that it's in a not perfect condition. But yeah, as you can see, it's in silver, and then we open it up, remove the the paper covering, and our MacBook Pro starts up automatically. Kind of used to that now. And as you can see, this is the 14 inch variant, as I said earlier. Now, what I like about the new MacBook Pros in general is the blacked out keyboard um, panel because just gives a nice contrast and I especially picked it with silver um, because it gives a nice contrast be be between the black key blacked out keyboard panel and the silver and here we have the new Apple startup um, animation so all I have to do is just quickly set it up, but I'm probably going to do that in my own time now. This was just a quick unboxing video of the MacBook Pro. To use English as the main language, press the return key. And uh, I'm going to give you a full review on it, so stay tuned for that video. I'm going to be making a full review on this bad boy and see how well it goes, but I'm pretty excited for this laptop. So much reviews I've been watching on the M1 Max it gets a lot of hype. Um, and I'm excited to put it through its paces. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the Mac. And I'm going to give you my first impressions of what do I think of it after opening it from the box. Now, as you can see, I slapped on an in-case hard shell case on this laptop to protect it from accidental drops and scratches and stuff. And so far, slapping on the case, I do have a bit of a um, worry that when you slap on the case as you can see these like grips i'm worried that they might scratch the body of the laptop but i don't really like when my stuff are scratched or dented so i was kind of skeptical of putting it on but yeah i mean because i read a lot of reviews on these in case hard shell cases some say they're very good at protecting but others say they scratch your laptop so i would love guys if you give me your thoughts on if you have one on in case hard shell cases on your Mac Max, just give me an idea. Should I leave it on or just take it off? I have it without it. But yeah, let's talk about the Mac itself. So first of all, the the new thing about the new MacBook Pros are the notch. Um, I'm kind of I don't really know what to say about it. I don't really mind it. It's at least we get slimmer bezels on the other sides and I mean you do have to have a notch to you know have the webcam so I don't really mind the notch presence uh, at, at least the bezels are smaller now so that's all what matters I already gave you my opinion on the uh, blacked out keyboard panel I love that it looks very very gorgeous with the silver color um, very nice contrast and then the, the design itself. I like the Mac, the new designs of the MacBook Pros. The way it starts off flat from the top and grounds down to the bottom compared to the previous generation MacBook Pros with the touch bars that used to have a symmetrical kind of design. And also what we notice is the new MacBook Pros are thick. They're thicker than the, not really that by much, they're thicker than the previous generation MacBook Pros. And that's to an advantage because now we get all the ports back. We get an SD card slot. We get an HD HDMI back. So these two ports, having them back, it's nice because I don't have to carry dongles with me anymore. I used to carry dongles with me uh, on my Touch Bar MacBook Pro, but now I can forget about them. And I have all the ports I need built into the device. So that's nice as well. And to be honest, some people might not like that. Some people might not like that. I don't really mind it. I like having the ports back. I don't mind the extra thickness. It's not actually as heavy as I hope, thought it would be. So it's still portable. And of course you can go for the 16 inch if you want a bigger screen estate. Bigger, if you want a bigger screen. Now what's also noticeable is um, the feet. Now this is in the case. Uh, the, the feet are now bigger so that the airflow is better that so that your MacBook Pro essentially is quieter so that it cools itself better and we have our MacBook Pro which is kind of hard to see in the case MacBook Pro 
a script there instead of it being in the bottom of the screen like we used to have before. And then we have our exhausts here. And yeah, I'm generally a pretty a fan of this new design. I like it. Um, and I like the sharper corners and the bigger Apple logo. Yeah, I really like the design of the new MacBook Pros. Uh, of course, now the touch bar being gone because I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar. Now, to be honest, the touch bars, a lot of people said it's not that useful, but there were some benefits to the touch bar that I'm going to miss switching to this new MacBook Pros. I can get over it. I'm pretty sure I'll forget about the touch bar once I start using this machine. But yeah, there were some good, cool benefits to the touch bar, which I am probably going to miss a bit. And of course, the big upgrade now we have 14 inches and that's one inch obviously bigger than my 13 inch and doesn't feel that much bigger actually you don't really notice the big the bigger screen size and but the benefits now is you get slimmer bezels as i talked about but let's talk about the display itself so we get a 120 hertz refresh rate mini led display which has a peak brightness of 1600 nits of hdr content which is just lovely and this display apparently can go up to 1000 nits of brightness, but Apple limits it to 500. I don't know why, but 500 is still good enough. The biggest thing I like about the display is number one, mini LED. So we get the OLED characteristics, but it's not obviously an OLED, which means you will have some blooming, like I talked about on my Apple M1 iPad Pro review. Blooming is present in the, these mini LED displays. But number two, 120 hertz of refresh rate. I'm not, I don't crave for 120 hertz of refresh rate usually, but it's nice to have. It just makes the whole experience of using this device much smoother. And yeah, I definitely enjoy a nice 120 hertz display. So yeah, guys, these are probably my first impressions. And I'll be doing a full review on this machine after two, three, four weeks of use, putting it through its paces on my workflow. And as I said, this machine is probably overkill for me. I don't need these type of specs. I am pretty sure a MacBook Pro M1 Pro with 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU would be fine for me. But have but the benefits of having an M1 Max is it's gonna last longer because it's more powerful. So long term, this is gonna last longer. In case I maybe switch to a more heftier, you know, camera file, uh, camera and stuff like that. Maybe I'll start recording 6K or whatever in the future. This might put this might handle it, whereas an M1 Pro would struggle a little bit. But yeah, guys, let me know what do you think of the new MacBook Pros. So, um, I am big fans of them so far. I really like it, the new design, and I can't wait to use it on Final Cut of my Sony A7S III uh, because the problem with my 14-inch MacBook Pro is it couldn't handle Sony A7S III footage, so I had to upgrade, which was kind of a mistake in the first place. I should have just gone for the 16 inch with a Core i9 probably. But so far I'm filming this on Sony A7S3 8 bit footage, but I want to film 10 bit 422 codec footage. That's why I had to switch to the M1 Max. But also the 13 inch MacBook Pro will sometimes struggle with graphic work, graphic content, like working with, you know, Adobe After Effects and stuff. So this is obviously going to be a huge upgrade. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. As I said, I'll be giving you my full review on it. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of the new MacBook Pros? And thanks for watching, guys. See you again in the next video.